On the bench we have a 70 centimeter band uh, masthead preamp kit by Mini Kits uh, in South Australia. This is a, an Australian uh, designed kit and uh, it's uh, broadly described as a high performance masthead preamp uh, specifically designed for the uh, 70 centimeter band. Uh, so the uh, general specifications are it has a frequency range tunable across 430 to 450 megahertz has a band rejection of 35 dB at uh, 145 megahertz uh, which is ideal because this will be likely used uh, in um, crossband um, type operations uh, so a third harmonic um, uh, overloading of the preamp would be uh, an issue uh, with uh, out that level of band rejection uh, also has uh, 60 dB of uh, rejection at 900 megahertz the um, gain is adjustable, uh, typically uh, 29 dB uh, maximum gain. has a noise figure of uh, typically uh, 0 0.85 uh, dB. Uh, has a power handling um, capability of 50 watts CW. Now, it has also got um, bypass relays. Uh, and an RF sensing circuit, so uh, that's uh, suitable up to 50 watts uh, continuous um, and uh, so that would uh, also offer some protection to the uh, preamp. Now uh, this is most likely going to be used with a bias T um, and uh, use the uh, AGC and the uh, radio to um, switch the preamp, but that's nice to have a backup. Um, the uh, minimum RF to activate the um, RF sensing is 100 milliwatts um, and the power supply is uh, plus 11 to uh, 15 volts DC with uh, a current draw of around 220 milliamps. So that's the general specifications. On the construction front, the um, notes, which are fairly extensive, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, the uh, construction notes uh, say this is for advanced constructors uh, who have uh, experience soldering surface mount components. So we have quite a lot of surface mount components. And they're not the smallest uh, surface mount uh, components, but they are surface mount components. Now I haven't got a lot of experience um, building kits with surface mounted components. I've done a few repairs with surface mount devices and uh, I've had a little bit of a practice on a uh, old um, computer board so uh, I wouldn't call myself advanced but we're going to have a go anyway. Um, it generally goes on to say that um, the smallest surface mount component should be attempted first which makes sense and that's what I'll do. So I've ordered, organized a bit of a strategy of uh, how I'm going to tackle this um, and uh, the uh, devil will be in the detail. Now, uh, comes with um, this box, which is uh, similar or the same as what you would typically get for a uh, TV masthead um, amplifier. So, it should be waterproof and um, cable tie connections on the uh, rear. So that's the kit, and uh, so we'll uh, get started. Okay, the equipment used in this project is uh, a standard uh, Weller iron, so it's a reasonably old one, but uh, uh, still suitable for the job. It's got a reasonably fine tip, but probably not as fine as would be ideal. Uh, so it's a small uh, chisel tip, uh, some uh, 0.7 mil resin core solder, a flux pen, it's also uh, pretty important, um, some PCB uh, cleaning solution and cotton buds. Uh, I've also got uh, some other resin solder flux, pretty crucial. Uh, pair of tweezers, pair of inverse tweezers, 
and we're also using a uh, USB microscope so this has been really useful um, to be honest I'm not sure you could do it without it I couldn't do it without it uh, when you think you're seeing what's on the board uh, and then you uh, present it under the microscope uh, reveals a lot of um, uh, detail that you're just uh, not aware of so uh, this is a fairly cheap USB microscope but for what it is uh, and I've just got some images up on the screen now that that's what you uh, see um, so it, it does a really nice job and um, quite a lot of distance between the um, um, lens and the work area uh, so you can get your soldering iron under there without any problem also the, the depth of field in the image uh, means you can you know move up and down a little bit and um, you, you're still well within focus so uh, yeah pretty critical um, and uh, obviously we've got some good light um, above the work area so uh, yeah that's the gear Okay, the uh, C20 is the next component um, being installed. So again, we're um, yeah, flexing that pad, putting a uh, dot of solder on the iron, placing that on the pad. In the C20 capacitor into place never totally easy really important to keep the uh, <laughs> tweezers um, clean and not sticky so um, just uh, reflow that pad I, I am being overly pedantic here. Um, I, I do want these to uh, um, look good, so we're centering that up on the pad, and that placement looks really nice. So, turning the board around you know, just for um, access of the iron. Yeah, it looks good. We'll just turn it around, reflow the other side. Okay, just marking the C20 capacitor off on the layer, keeping track of uh, what's uh, installed and what's not. And we're moving on to uh, uh, C19 now. Okay, now installing um, C19. So again, we're going to double solder on the pad. So I've, I've tried a few techniques with uh, surface mount and this seems to be the most straightforward, um, easiest way to do it. And 
So what we've done, we've fluxed that pad, put a bit of solder on there, lay that on the pad, so we've just got a bit of solder for the component to bond to, do a, uh, a quick tack solder, and then lay the component in uh, properly. And there you go, there's a mistake. So we're sticking with the technique of, uh, actually what we'll do is turn the board around. The, uh, the uh, tack actually rises a surface obviously of one side, so you really only want to do one side, tack one side at a time. Again, I'm being really overly pedantic here, and not really necessary, but I can't not do it. So that looks a little better to me. You know, it's just never really good enough. <laughs> so that's tacked in position, and I could. Okay, that, I'm perfectly happy with that now. <laughs> um, there's a bit of a parallax, I think, with the uh, microscope possibly. Just uh, you know, laying it in there looks right. And when you have a look at it afterwards, it's uh, not quite lined up. But look, that's um, now um, perfect as far as I'm concerned. So we just line the scope up on that component. C19. And C19 is blending in very well with the. Flux uh, on there. Lay the solder across the edge of the capacitor. So this is a fairly big capacitor for surface mount. Flow the solder. And uh, to me, that one is uh, pretty much perfect. We'll just turn it around and reflow the other sides. <clears throat> so I understand from the notes the uh, flux actually can be an issue for um, circuit performance. Um, so. Uh, really important to get all this flux cleaned off at the end so that's uh, a bit of a process and then the uh, cleaning fluid needs to be cleaned off as well so uh, and perhaps dried with some hot air okay
Okay, that's the placement of C17, C24, and C25. Okay, I'm finding the uh, resistor color bands a little bit hard to read. Um, the light's pretty good, but uh, they um, just seem a little obscure, so I pretty much verified uh, every one uh, that's been installed. So we go uh, well, it's close to 1K. Okay, we're up to uh, installing D4. Um, <clears throat> so this is a um, diode, so we've got to be uh, conscious of the polarity. Now the way this is set up is uh, looks like a, a bit of an augmentation of the uh, original circuit. So uh, what we need to do is put in this uh, 22 ohm resistor in series. So that will be placed there. Now I have to bring this resistor over
Yeah, that's probably as neat as I can uh, make that. Okay, that's um, D4 and uh, R11 installed. Okay, uh, again, another diode. This is um, <clears throat> D6. It's a small signal diode. Again, polarity is important. It's indicated on the board. him in there Okay, the uh, the running list of components. So this is now the 22 uh, ohm resistor R11 and uh, R12 installed. Uh, we have D3, D4, and D6. So the uh, two components that are missing. <laughs> Uh, the uh, R2 10 ohm resistor, which was uh, lost during construction, so we're just waiting for a replacement on that one. And the uh, light emitting diode, which was uh, uh, missing from the kit. Um, the uh, um, supplier is uh, sending a new one to replace that. So we just leave those two out, and that's all the components, all the um, components bar the relays. And we'll now look at putting the relays in. Okay, what I'm going to do is uh, tack one leg. I'm not sure if this is the best approach, but this is what we're doing. Make sure we're getting orientated correctly. pretty good.
Okay, we just fit the uh, female TNC connectors. Try this over on its back. Okay, we'll just uh, complete the inspection, get the uh, in focus. Okay. Yeah, I'm generally happy with the uh, flux cleaning. Board looks quite clean. Not 100% happy with my surface mount component install, but I'll say as a first effort, um, it's probably okay. The test will be in the uh, uh, operation. Just turn the board over. Focus. It's the uh, bypass link. TNC connector. This is the test rig to evaluate the 70cm uh, band uh, preamp. Uh, so we're using a uh, nano VNA. Uh, the channel 0 port will eject a uh, signal via this 20dB attenuator into the antenna port on the preamp. The preamp will be powered up. We should see some gain in relation to the frequent, various frequencies and that will then be evaluated by the nano VNA um, via the channel 1 port. Now uh, the 20 dB attenuator was uh, put in because an initial um, evaluation of the preamp had it topping out at around 20 dB again. Reasonably respectable but um, <clears throat> not what it's meant to be. It's meant to be up towards the 30 mark 
and it was a fairly flat response um, above 20 dB, which sort of indicated that uh, something was topping out. I had actually thought it was the uh, VNA, uh, but fairly quickly concluded it was the uh, preamp itself being overloaded. Uh, so once it reached saturation, um, it just couldn't get any more gain. So we weakened the signal um, by putting the uh, 20 dB attenuator in there, giving the preamp a nice uh, weak signal to uh, amplify, and uh, then we get a, a fairly meaningful response. Now the other thing that's very important um, in this setup is that the um, um, VNA be calibrated. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to um, calibrate out, zero out all the characteristics of the uh, test leads, uh, the attenuator, we want to get all the uh, reactants out, uh, so that all we're looking at is um, the um, gain at the end of the two coaxes going in and out of the uh, preamp. So that's a very critical thing. Uh, what we should see once that's um, calibrated is that um, when these two are, are connected together, we should see a flat 0 dB across the um, spectrum we're measuring. And, um, and then once powered up, the uh, amplifier will uh, show the uh, true um, gain and performance so that's the setup. Okay, we've got the uh, line looped through for calibration. Through. Save. Set the frequency range to start 100 megahertz. Stop 800 megahertz. So uh, that's pretty successful. We've got uh, the 0 dB line uh, reasonably flat from 100 megahertz to 800. We're just going to calibrate the display. Set the scale. So we've got uh, 10 dB per increment, 10, 20, 30, 40, minus 10, minus 20, minus 30, minus 40. So we move across there, more or less zero. Okay, now we break the link and not unexpectedly it drops down to uh, minus a lot connecting the preamp into the circuit Okay, so the normal configuration for the preamp is that the relays are switched straight through. So we're still essentially seeing 0 dB in the unpowered state. A few little ripples at each end. Um, some of these I put down to the um, link between the um, two relays. Uh, probably ha has uh, some reflections. Uh, there's also some other components in there for um, the um, DC isolation and RF, so a few capacitors and inductors, so they may be having a little bit of an effect on that. But more or less flat, and it's flat uh, where we need it, which is around the 
you know, 450 odd meg mark. So we're going to power the amplifier up. The 12 volts is applied. And there we have it. We've got uh, yeah, 28, very close to 29 dB, which is exactly what the uh, spec sheet says it should be. And you know, I'm fairly happy with it, um, having peaked at around 436 megahertz, which is almost where we want it exactly. It is where we want it exactly. So we can zoom in a bit and uh, have a look at this. Just set the frequency range from say start 350 megahertz, stop. Oh, I don't know, 500. So now we get a really good idea of what the uh, amplifier looks at at the uh, desired frequency. Uh, so around the peak at 440 and we'll roll off 1 dB to 450 and prop another dB down to 420 so that's a pretty good uh, band pass. We would have measured it at 3 dB with well outside the 70 centimeter band. Let's just take it back out to the 100 meg to 800 meg range. And the good thing is we're getting no gain around 440 to 450. Uh, in fact, we've got a bit of a loss, which is good. I think that's about um, what's specified, around about that minus, you know, 8, 9 dB. Um, so this is the 2 metre band at 145 megahertz. Um, if these are operated uh, at the same time, you'll get some third harmonics. So we, we definitely don't want that uh, getting into the receiver. So having the uh, you know difference there and some attenuation at two meters is very good. Uh, go up to the higher frequencies. Uh, pretty quickly drops off. Um, yeah, seven seven hundred odd meg. We're getting you know minus twenty dB. That's also pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'm happy with that as a valuation. So we've got uh, the amplifier functioning pretty normally. Now I'm just I'm just going to. Uh, uh, adjust the gain to see what range we have. We're sitting right up there on the peak. The screwdriver is in the gain adjustment, so turn the gain down. Not a huge amount of movement, but I think that's as per the spec. So it uh, is between, you know, 19 odd dB and uh, about 29, I think that's a spec. Uh, 29 seems like quite a bit of gain. Pro I probably will back it off a bit, but at the moment um, we'll leave it there. And uh, that's very successful. I'm, I'm extremely happy with that, as um, uh, pretty much working first up with very minimal adjustment. I, I will uh, adjust the uh, frequency um, filter at the front end so if I adjust that 
We're moving up in frequency. Not quite, not, not oh yeah. I'm going to bring it back. Yeah, so we can we can really move the gain, peek around. the upper limit yeah that's uh, quite an interesting upper limit the uh, UHF CB band in Australia uh, is around about there so you could use this preamp uh, on that band if you wanted to but that's not where we want it we want it at uh, There we go. I'm just going to quickly uh, look a bit closer to make sure we peak that at the correct spot. So we're going to start again at uh, uh, 350 meg, stop 500 meg. I'm going to peek it in the uh, uh, yeah, peek it around four thirty seven. That's uh, somewhat close to the area of interest. A little bit. little bit finicky but not too bad I mean that's not that's yeah right on the money there all right very happy with that not going to play with it any further I regard that as now an operational amplifier Right, the uh, test I'm performing now is the uh, current draw of the um, preamp. The uh, kit specifications uh, indicate it should be 200 milliamps. Um, I've tested the line voltage as being almost exactly 12 volts. Um, and so we're going to measure the milliamp load. DC, complete the circuit, no smoke, wow, pretty much exactly 200 milliamps. Make sure you make a good contact, I guess. But uh, yep, we'll take those 200 milliamps exactly as specified. Right, another measurement I want to do is to um, measure the 5 volt bus voltage that pretty much runs the whole amplifier so it comes off the back of this um, 5 volt regulator so we've got 12 volts in um, and through the regulator then 5 volts running along here so uh, meter is set for DC volts Just power up the amplifier Ground 
brown spot here and yeah, pretty close 4.9 so that's very close to 5 volts so that's happy with that Right, while um, poking around the uh, preamp while it was running um, when doing measurements, I brushed against this resistor here, uh, which is the resistor that's in series with a blocking diode for the uh, incoming supply. It's a 22 ohm 2 watt resistor, and it was so hot that you could not put your finger on it. Um, so I consulted the um, uh, kit notes and there is actually a warning about not touching that resistor because of how hot it gets. But it's really hot. Um, I'm not entirely happy that it's so hot. So I'm actually, I've got the thermocoupler connected to the meter and we'll, this is not going to be very accurate because uh, the thermocoupler is more designed for fluids and gases but it will give an idea. Um, helps if you get on the... Yeah, not sure if it... Yeah, probably the room temperature. My finger on there. Yeah. Goes up to roughly body temperature. So... Um, fire the circuit up. The uh, thermocoupler on top of that resistor. I'm trying to get the most contact I can get. That's actually the um, drawback with these is you can't get proper heat transfer. So this is going to underread it, and the temperature is climbing. Sixty, still climbing. Seventy degrees C. Going. It's going to make 80 for sure. Seems to be topping out. Oh, still going. So, I mean, this is on the open bench, so the ventilation's fairly good. 80, we're almost 90 degrees. You could just about boil water on this. And this is under reading it. So I think we're probably fairly close to. I'd say we're going to make 90 degrees without too much trouble. Okay, seems to have topped that around 90. All right, but in my mind, that's actually very hot. And like I say, this is under reading it. So uh, probably around about, you know, close to 100 C. Okay, now I'm going to measure the voltage across that resistor because the idea of that resistor is to produce a bit of voltage drop. So the... Um, Regulator is not working so hard. Um, my guess is that maybe it could be a slightly higher value than 22 ohms. Okay, I'm going to measure the uh, voltage across this resistor. So I'll just uh, get this 
so we don't run the risk of touching anything we don't want to touch. Back to the top. DC volts. And we get four and a half volts across that. Which is uh, probably what you want to see, actually. Okay. We'll have to have a think about that. Um, maybe put a high wattage resistor in there. Don't know, but that's very hot. Okay, this is the uh, finish of the construction. Uh, about to ready to go into its housing. I've made one slight modification to the circuit. Uh, I have replaced the 22 ohm um, supply resistors with uh, 33 ohm and they're rated to 5 watts. Uh, it does still get warm but it's quite touchable so it has reduced that temperature quite a lot. I'm a bit happier with that. Um, I would however stress that this is not a generic modification. My situation is that um, we're running at 13.8 volts DC. Um, the coax that will be um, fed to the unit is uh, LMR 400. It's a fairly meaty coax. It's got very little um, DC resistance. The coax run is very short, probably about uh, 6 metres, 7 metres maybe. Um, so there's very little voltage drop. Um, if the unit was on a high mast at a remote location, coax was maybe not as strong, you might experience a lot of voltage drop. Um, may also be running at 12 volts, not 13.8 volts. So that may be an issue. Um, so that in, in those situations, I would stick with the um, original 22 ohm resistors. In my situation, I felt they were getting um, too hot to be reasonable. So uh, we've changed them. I, I mean, I, I would suggest that maybe you could change them to a um, high wattage resistor. Just disperse the heat a bit better. Um, physically, they're quite large. <laughs> Doesn't look anywhere near as, as attractive as the um, uh, original layout. Um, but I feel that's a compromise I'm prepared to make. Anyway, I think that wraps it up for the uh, construction of the circuit board. I'm just going to put it into the uh, enclosure now. And uh, I'll just uh, release it from this now. Okay, now I think this should just... Click in. Okay, is the uh, board mounted in the um, uh, weatherproof housing? Door shuts quite nicely, despite having the. Uh, slightly higher resistors, um, but very happy with that. Okay, that's the uh, completion of the uh, Mini Kits 70cm um, masthead preamp. Very happy with the uh, kit, very happy with the uh, project. Come together uh, amazingly easy, um, given my first uh, attempt at uh, surface mount devices. Um, looks fantastic. Um, can't wait to get it uh, up on the mast into service. So, um, yeah, look, anybody who's watched the video, I hope you uh, enjoyed it. Um, stay tuned. There will be uh, more to come. Thank you for watching.